Welcome to Charlotte Motor Speedway for NASCAR Cup Series practice and qualifying on a hot, somewhat steamy day following an exciting Xfinity Series race. 86 degrees ambient, track temp 128. And here we are to practice about an hour or so in advance of the time the race will start tomorrow night. So welcome to our nice air-conditioned booth. Thank goodness. Mike Joy, Kevin Harvick, Clint Boyer with you. Are we practicing for tomorrow night's race, the longest of the year, or are we practicing for today's qualifying? Yes. Yes. <laughs> We're exactly practicing for right. both because you got to go these first uh, lap or two to understand what you need for qualifying. So, uh, And after watching that Xfinity race, you also need to understand where you need to run on the racetrack because <laughs> every lane is available. So it's going to be an interesting practice. Well, they applied the resin on the racetrack. That enabled this rubber to get down in the racetrack, widen that groove out very fast. You already see these cars way up high um, in that Xfinity race. But moreover, you see them on top of this racetrack. These guys have their hands full, slipping and sliding around. This track temperature is way up, and that means it's going to be slick. So I'm going to be glued to seeing where these guys are out on this racetrack and moreover where they're going to figure out how to bust that big lap off for qualifying. Yeah, and I think that the hardest part about today's practice is understanding that it's going to be a handful, but it's very relevant for tomorrow. When this track is hot, this is one of the most difficult racetracks to get a hold of because of all the bumps and just how temperature sensitive the whole racetrack is. Yeah, tomorrow should be a little warmer than today, and we're starting the race about an hour later than we're practicing right now, as you watched last year's winner of the Coca-Cola 600. Uh, we saw Ryan Blaney. Here is Joey Logano, uh, fresh off the all-star win. Here's Blaney with that big one in that middle column in 2023. Hmm, eight starts, two top tens, one win 2023 in the Coca-Cola 600. Ooh, see him get loose right there in the, the middle of one and two. I think as this, as this practice session goes, you'll see a lot of these guys move up to the middle lane of the racetrack. Um, right now, I think you can get away with the bottom of the racetrack in turns three and four. I think this middle lane through one and two will be preferred until the tires really start to, to go off of these cars. But um, through three and four, you want to have a nice square entry and, and wrap that left front to the white line or the seam, whatever your choice is. Now, Tyler Reddick is on track, and they have had a difficult day in NASCAR's inspection lane. Let's check with our crew chief, Larry McReynolds. Yeah, Mike, this could take a whole segment to read through all of this. They passed inspection this morning the first time, but NASCAR noticed they maybe had done something to the front splitter. They made them fix it. They went through a second time, and they failed. They did pass the third time, but because they made an adjustment to that front splitter during or after inspection, their car chief was ejected. They will lose pit selection. At the drop of the green flag tomorrow, they have to drop to the rear and have to do a pass-through penalty, but NASCAR is going to make them go out and make a qualifying run. That way, one of their sets of tires for tomorrow will be scuffed just like everybody else. They wouldn't have 13 sets of stickers. They'll have 12 stickers and the qualifying scuff. Thanks, Larry. A lot of guys feeling this racetrack out, Kevin. I see them in down in one and two, the middle, the bottom. Not really up high as they were in the Xfinity, but even in three and four, already starting to move this racetrack up. Yeah, you know it's clean up there. So I, I would say as, as they run through practice and get towards the end of, of this session, they'll definitely feel it out. Well, the big story all of last weekend and this is Kyle Larson and what he is attempting to do, become the sixth man to run the Indy 500 and the Coca-Cola 600 in one day and try to be the second to run all 1,100 miles in one day. Here's Regan Smith. Well, Mike, that's right. It's been a busy week for Kyle Larson, back and forth from Indy to Charlotte. Back here in Charlotte right now as you get ready to practice your Coke 600 car. What are your expectations out of this practice? What are you going to be looking for to make it good for tomorrow night? Um, I think just uh, hopefully a good balance and good ride quality. It looks, uh, watching Xfinity race, looks like it's gotten even rougher. So, yeah, just uh, try to get a feel for it here. And, um, yeah, I'm confident our, our car will be fast. And just got to uh, see what I can learn here today. Conditions are always a little bit different on Saturday than Sunday. Um, I think the race starts maybe around now, but it goes into night. So just try to uh, learn and adapt and then just get, get a feel for it. All right, good luck. Thanks, Kyle. William Byron spun coming off turn number four. Here's a look at it. 
top from underneath of him right there, Kevin, just lost it. Yeah, and when you go through the middle of the corner right there, there's these big choppy bumps uh, from the seams and cracks in the, in the racetrack, and, and it's, um, you know, as you want to carry as much speed as you can, but a lot of times you're partial throttle, but it really unloads, and you have to start uh, turning the car back the other way to, uh, to try to get that rear loaded up. All right, the track is under caution for Byron's spin with no contact. Ross Chastain ran only four laps when everybody else did six or seven at the start of this session. Came back to the pits and now he is back out. Here's some radio from the one. Not rough at all. On throttle, it can compress the rear enough to the first lap, but to left rear and shear the rear off on the two. Not only on throttle, but entry bumps are fine for um, roughness in the three. We're gonna lose wasn't terrible. Um, but uh, I would need it to not get worse is what I was worried about. Yeah, so you, you got to run those limiters that we talk about on the shocks as close as possible um, because you want the car to absorb as much of the uh, bumps as possible and you want the back as low as possible. But when it touches those limiters in certain spots around here, you know, it's it's tough for the car to come out. That could be what happened to William Byron as those as those bumps in the middle of three and four uh, just kind of got the back out from underneath him. Uh, the bumps that Ross is talking about, you could probably is the bump off of turn two that compresses these cars really hard. It's almost up on the straightaway. So the cars got to ride the bumps. You got bumps on the entry to turn three, entry to turn one, all the way through the middle of three and four. So you definitely have to have a good ride quality here. Well, the Xfinity race preceded this, and Josh Sims is with its winner. Well, that's right, Chase Elliott, already with a win here today in the Xfinity Series on this track. Is there anything you could pull as you get set to go out for practice here in the Cup Stops car? Unfortunately, not much. Uh, these cars are just so different, and I'm just trying to take a couple minutes to rewind and, and start thinking about this car more and, and what it likes. So. Uh, it's already cooled off a lot, I feel like, and which is good because that's kind of how we're going to be racing tomorrow. So looking forward to uh, you know, seeing what our Napa Chevy has and get ready for 600 miles. Chase Elliott getting set for his 300th career cup start there, Mike. Six drivers are, are doing double duty in both races. What he alluded to right there, Kevin, that's the name of the game. You're going to start this race in the heat of the day. That sun goes down, and boy, grip level goes through the roof. And that's usually when somebody shows up. <laughs> and that's the, that's the hard part about getting your car to where it needs to be because it has to drive good at the beginning of this race when the racetrack is greasy and slimy and, uh, you know, you're searching for grip. And then when it starts to get dark, then the speed picks up, and then those limiters start to get closer and, and, and closer to the things that, that you don't want to happen. Larry? Yeah, I talked to a lot of crew chiefs this week, like Jonathan Hassler with Ryan Blaney, Chris Gaypart with Denny Hamlin, and it's not unusual to have this little short practice session on Saturday, but normally it's 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning. They were pretty excited at the fact that this practice not only was going to happen, to your point, about the time this race is going to start, but it's only about an hour since that 300 mile Xfinity Series race ended and the, and the track is nice and rubbered in. They, they were kind of liking the fact that they're going to be able to tune to these conditions. You can tell riding along with Blaney right there, that car was plenty neutral to free getting through one and two. Well, it's, it's like I you know, tell people all the time that the car is never going to be comfortable here. When you come to Charlotte Motor Speedway, the car is never comfortable. I don't know if you were ever comfortable, Clint, but no. it, it, in these conditions, when the sun is out, uh, it's been raced on, the rubber's all over the racetrack, it's, it's just hard to get a hold of the racetrack. And it's a lot of finesse, a lot of just making the car go as fast as it'll go, but it's you know, through the middle of the corner, but it has to be comfortable on the entry to the corner. You well, can manage the exit, and it has to go fast through the center, but it, if you cannot get in the corner here over the bumps, you're in big trouble. Has a lot of character. It is bumpy out there. There's no question about it. It's a bumpy racetrack, but you are flying. You are flat hauling the mail at this racetrack, and you put those two together, it's a, it's a sketchy feeling. But you do have options here, and... As we as we look at Christopher Bell uh, slowing down to, to come to the pit road to 
do all the little things that, that maybe he wants to work on his car. He probably got nine minutes, so he probably wants to work on his car. But as we watch John Hunter, John Hunter here uh, in the 42 car, you've got options as you go into turn three. But right about there here at the end of the straightaway, you see the car start to bounce. There's those bumps, but you have to have a square entry. You want to stay above that first seam if you're going to run the middle lane and not go and split those seams like we talk at a lot of places. Because if you do, it kind of unloads that car where that seam kind of, those seams kind of have a rise in the middle of three and four in the same way with the bumps, which is what makes them worse. And down here through one and two, the preferred lane is going to be through the middle until the tires re really start to get worn out and the lap time falls off especially during the day, they'll start moving up the racetrack to keep that momentum up through the middle of the corner. Well, that's what makes this track challenging, too, though. You do have options, but that option's probably not the option you want to take. That means shooting down there on the bottom. Go ahead, kid. Yeah. Go down there and try it. You get loose down there to get the old hospital hop, getting into one, even into three over those bumps that you were talking about. It is uh, is a challenging place to make a pass at this racetrack at these and, speeds. And we just saw Brad run the bottom through turns three and four. And you know, through the middle, through one and two right here. But through three and four, I think you can get away. If your car is going good because it slows so much down through the middle, if you can get that car to work on the bottom and be comfortable and uh, keep that speed up through the middle of the corner, you can get away with it on this end. But Just you want like that, that left front tire in three and four right there, right on the right on the paint, because the, the seam to the racetrack is actually almost at the top of that paint. So that paint gets rubbered up. And that left front tire will actually gain grip, and you can keep that center speed up. Feels like you lock onto a train track. It's it like, really where does. Where is it? Where is it? Whoa, oh, there it is. There's probably not a track on the circuit that has more character or takes longer to describe how to drive uh, than Charlotte Motor Speedway. David Pearson once won 11 poles in a row here. During that streak, track president Huppy Wheeler had one end of the speedway, had the whole lower groove and a half repaved. Pearson goes out, wins the pole again. And back then, it was a four-lap average for the pole, much like Indianapolis. And in victory lane, as he accepted his award, he tapped Huppy on the shoulder and said, you paved the wrong end. Uh, <laughs> sounds like something he Well, I, you know what? He's right. Turns three and four are just difficult here. The, the tunnel in the back stretch is right about three quarters of the way down the straightaway. But there are bumps going in swells. They used to be swells. I would call them bumps now. And you have to square the entry of that corner off in order to get the angle of the car right. And you'll see Chase Briscoe right here. You have to square this entry off. So you want to be up, and, and that's, that's a middle lane. But you want to do the same thing when you're in the middle lane, too. You have to square that entry off to get over those bumps the correct way and try to get over the bumps straight so that you can get the car angled through the middle of the corner so that it doesn't get tight and snap loose at the three-quarter mark. And that's the setup in these race cars. I mean, over the years, you'd have one that would handle those bumps well, and the next time you come around and it's too harsh. Those bumps just get those tires bouncing on the rear of that thing, and it's a, it makes for a long night, 600 miles around here, chasing that thing, getting into three every every lap. And we've seen this car of William Byron spin out already. So we, we talk about those bumps, and you know maybe he just lost it, but we, we talked that it maybe could be hitting those limiters in the back because you want the car as low as possible because that's where that diffuser is going to make the most grip. And you want all the grip you can get here. And now you see William back in the bottom lane. He spun out in the hey, middle man, lane. He's still loose. He's yeah. going to come back in. Boys, not enough yet. Fix me up. And he, timid now. Probably. He did spin out, so maybe he was just practicing pit road entry uh, because those tires. Did you see the tail on that dog wagon, man? But I'm he just saying, loose, he, boy. maybe he was making a, a pit road entry is why he didn't keep going, but he was still <laughs> loose even trying to do that. Now, Larry says that was the plan to practice pit road entry right there. Is we get a look at Michael McDowell. See Walmart. I see Petty Blue. Yeah. That's all I can see. Gosh, yes. The numbers were reversed, but the three and a four on a race car in that blue. I like when I see new sponsors on, on the cars. Yes, Clinton, sir. And Walmart is, is definitely not something that we have seen on a car. That's one that everybody in this whole industry has been after for a long time. You yeah. see Walmart showing up on racing, it means this sport's headed in the right direction. We've seen it. The infield of this place, I pulled in and the bus, and I could not believe it, man. This place is absolutely packed this weekend. Beautiful weather. Awesome to see. Daniel Hemrick, one day here at Charlotte Motor Speedway on a, I think it was a Tuesday night. He won a quarter million dollars from a million dollar purse driving a U.S. Legends car. 
Uh, Bruton Smith promoted it as the Legends Million. That was the total purse. He won it, took home the lion's share, bought himself a couple of rides in upper NASCAR series, and, well, the rest is history. Here he is. That's pretty big. You win $250,000 in a Legends car. I mean, you take a cup car and go win that, well, you've about spent that to win it, right? Legends car, you, you're taking home a pot of gold. At the time, that was about 20 times what that race car cost. Darn right. Come Brian Blaney, who was occupying Clint's seat up here about an hour ago, that one's a little more squirmy right That's there. That's exactly the bumps you spoke of. Yeah, well, and I think that probably started over the bumps as he was turning in, and as he went through that first third of the corner, it just was unloaded because it didn't, it didn't get around those bumps correctly. Or through the bumps. Correctly. The wild thing is, is this very car that we're riding with, Ryan Blaney, right here. All right, look over here. We'll see who's the best consecutive 10 lap, 10 lap average. That would be Ryan Blaney. The best consecutive 15 lap average. That would also be Ryan Blaney. Uh, this may not have been by, one of those laps. Next time by, we almost wrecked it. Or yeah. maybe. I tell you what, he looked good up there. My man in that green suit, sharp. Did you see that today? I don't know who dressed him in a wool suit for a 90 degree day, but. Well, maybe he knew how well the air conditioning worked here. Noted. Everyone in Group A has practiced with the exception of J.J. Yaley. That's 19 out of 20 cars. We have the first full field for a NASCAR race in a long time uh, since we have had all of the 40 available starting spots filled, 36 charter cars and four open cars, including Ty Dillon. Harrison Burton, 12th on the speed chart for the Wood Brothers. This is always one of those practice sessions where I wanted to run the whole session. And I say that a lot every week. I always want to, I always <laughs> want to, I want to run every session uh, as long as I can. But this is really, really a rhythm racetrack with all the different lanes. You have different lift points. You have you know, you can drive in harder, you can drive in less, you can use a little bit of brake. You have so many options as a driver to make your car do something different. And I think that's what's really made this race so good the last several years. You're not the only one that wants that race car on the racetrack the whole session, right, Larry? That crew chief wants to see them tire sheets, them engineers. They want to go back through and see how this thing was handling cambers. Tire temps. Yeah, what I was doing when you threw to me, Clint, I've been reading the, the radio transmission between William Byron and Rudy Fugel. Of course, he's fastest in this practice session. And they finally convinced themselves they've got a fast race car. They're going to worry about qualifying. And then they'll make the right adjustments for the race tomorrow. Because the tire was in trouble when he spun. The, it was flat spotted. So that's why they just went out there and made one more lap just to make an entrance to pit road. Under a minute to go in Group A practice. As Joey Logano pulls in. William Byron debriefing using the headsets because of noise. We've seen a lot of mistakes out of those guys over the last few weeks, Clint. They gotta they got they gotta clean it up. We gotta we gotta get the thing back on the right track here. Well they're pushing hard, and when you push hard, you make mistakes. Had a great start to the season, have great speed in that race car. They know they have all the ingredients. And let's not forget, they have three wins. They can afford to take pushing. chances. Absolutely. I agree. He no, doesn't. I he don't. doesn't. Okay. I, I, I think momentum is a huge thing. I think you've got to be consistent and do those things week after week after week. We can't. We don't want to, want all those mistakes to pile up week after week. I can tell you this. It's uncharacteristic of those guys. I agree. If you go Good back point. and look at last season and where they've come from, that is certainly uncharacteristic. Byron Reddick Wallace and Hosevar, the fastest in Group A practice. The Sports Emmys were announced this week, and we are so proud of our audio crew again winning the Emmy for outstanding audio for a live sporting event to Kevin McCloskey and all of his audio engineers that uh, do their best every week to bring the sounds of the game right into your living room. Sincere congratulations on this Emmy win. We're proud of you. Heck yeah.
Track is open for Group B practice. There's Martin Truex Jr. A two time winner on Stock Car Racing's longest night. Well, Kyle's back in his cup car. It's got to feel weird, Kevin. Uh, you know, you heard Chase Elliott talk about it earlier. Just the differences in, in the cars and trying to wrap his mind around what he needed to do. But these guys are pros, but it is a drastic difference in how the cars feel from the Xfinity car to the cup car. I love the colors they put on this. Matches that Indy car he's going to be in over at the Indianapolis 500. Same good looking race car. Here's Look yesterday. Unbelievable. <laughs> Carb day. They still call it carb day at Indianapolis, even though carburetors haven't been part of the 500 for oh a few decades now. You know, I think that's great right there. They just had some adversity. Learned no, no, something no. there. They ran it out of fuel. But did you see the lug nut on the pit stop? Well, oh, I'm sorry, that. Like that kind of yeah. stuff is stuff that you're not going to be acclimated to as far as a race car driver when you go over and get them space shuttles, Kevin. You have to learn some of that adversity, and I'm glad that they saw some of that in practice. And the cool thing about Carb Day at Indy is Rick Hendrick flew Kyle Larson's NASCAR crew up to Indianapolis Entire to crew. observe. The whole crew came up uh, to be a part of uh, of Carb Day. Yeah, final that's, practice. A, that's a great experience. I did that when Robbie Gordon, uh, Richard Childress, and myself went up and watched Robbie Gordon uh, run Carb Day. and. Man, it's a it's a whole different experience than, than what we're doing here. Did you see that dirt on Cliff Daniels' shirt? That's something you don't hey, see every day, I, huh? Hey, I am. Those guys worked their butt off last week, so I'm. I would say he's going to be offended if you say that. Uh, <laughs> you don't think he gets he knows dirty? I'm teasing. Yeah. That's a white shirt and a Hendrick can't. Great crew chief. I think the world of Cliff Daniels. I always call him. He's he's so, you know pristine and perfect on, on his calls on that radio. He sounds like an air traffic controller. Well, he's and he's very much in control. <laughs> That's what I like. He's he's precise and in charge. If you're going to trust somebody, they need to be in control. That guy certainly is. Ty Gibbs, he's been on this racetrack already. Had an X Xfinity race under his belt. And he's fastest in this B session. Those drivers listed in white on our pylon. Josh? Well, down here with William Byron, fastest in Group A. We also saw a spin early in that session. What did you learn? Um, yeah, this racetrack's really slick, so um, our car has a lot of speed, and it's glad we didn't hit anything there, you know, just keep it off of the wall and everything like that. But um, we, we focus on trying to make our car uh, turn better coming here, and I think we accomplished that. So just trying to get the back more in the track and um, should have a good qualifying ever here. Definitely have a lot of speed and no damage to the car. Actually, saw that lap time graph that he's looking at there up on the board right here. It was up on the on the, the pit board or that's exactly what we all look at as an industry. You want to see the fall off. I don't care about the fastest car right now in practice. I want to know where he was at on lap 15, 20, 25. Well, we see a, a significant amount of speed difference in the first group in this in, in this group. So it'll be interesting to see what this equals out to in, in qualifying as to what the what the lap time levels off to be a good time in, in uh, qualifying trim. So always interesting the speed difference between the, the two groups. We didn't see the takeoff speed in Hamlin as we were riding along with him that we did see in Gibbs obviously having that Xfinity race under his belt. But how about Larson comes over here jumps in that car second quick of this group. Jimmy Johnson back. Four point. And uh, top tens in half of his 20 starts here. You saw Denny Hamlin, 11 out of 18 top 10 finishes. Uh, the guys that know how to win the big money, they're in contention. There's the proof of 50% top tens. Well, he certainly had his fair share of good runs at this racetrack, that's for sure. I saw a step in the right direction for Jimmy with this race car. You know, it didn't look very good at, at Kansas, but Dover was certainly better. Step in the right direction for him. Yeah, it's still going to be tough um, not doing it every week. You, you know, you have to fire back up, and it's a it's a tough uh, tough cycle to go through when you're not not in that car every week. But there was a long time here where he was the dominant guy, and you expected him to be in contention every time he raced here for the win. Well, Hendrick Motorsports is just down the street. This place used to be named Lowe's Motor Speedway, and uh, Jimmy 
And Chad, they felt it was their house. And uh, as you saw there, four victories, it was. All right, big clouds in the sky. And let's not talk about the weather, but uh, one of the weather apps says possibility of thunderstorms in about 52 minutes. Perfect. <laughs> not really. <laughs> Tell them to hurry. Chris Buescher third in Group B with a lap of 30 17. 13 and a half to go in Group B practice. Then we will turn over to qualifying. Chris Buescher has had an unfortunate encounter with the retaining wall. Well, you certainly see the left rear down. I don't know if that was the cause of it or not. You see it up here in the top of the screen pretty early in the corner, Kevin. Yeah, I, I'm going to guess that the left rear went flat, blew out. Well, certainly the right sides are both up. I cannot yep. see. The way it is, it looks flat right there. I think the left rear may have went down on him. Yeah, I would agree. And here's the radio. Um, it's a blue tire. Uh, this one's done. Boy, when you speculate, you, you certainly sit up here and hope that that was the deal and, and think we got that one right. Unfortunately, this car has been on fire. I've been saying for a couple weeks, they cannot keep this car out of victory lane. I was thinking he may have been one of our favorites, but as fast as this team has been, they might be able to get a backup car out and prove that know. they've got it. It's not terrible. We're halfway through Group B practice. Caution on the racetrack for Chris Busher. But also to honor Gold Star families who lost loved ones. This weekend, you'll see honor and remember flags all around Charlotte Motor Speedway and logos on the Goodyear tires on the cup car. Text flag to 41444 or scan the QR code on your screen to learn more. Group B practice just under 10 minutes left to run. Kyle Larson second fastest in this session. Regan. Well, Mike, the second quickest car in Group A was Tyler Reddick. Unfortunately, Tyler, we found out earlier that you're going to have to go to the rear to start the Coke 600 tomorrow. Also make a pass-through penalty early on in that race. That's the bad news. Good news is appears this car is very fast. How tough are the conditions on the track right now? Yeah, it's definitely tricky, but uh, that's what makes Charlotte so much fun, and that's what makes the uh, World 600 special race. So, yeah, we got a little work cut out for us in the beginning of the race, but, uh, you know, it feels like our Beast Unleashed Troy to Camry is pretty good, and any lane we put it in, and, and that's obviously going to be important uh, when we start this race at the back of the field. All right, thanks, Tyler. Kyle Busch on track with seven straight top half dozen finishes in this race. Chase Elliott has led it five in a row. Tyler Reddick, top 10 in every Coca-Cola 600 he's run in. And Martin Truex, the only repeat winner in the last 12 600s. You get Martin Truex Jr. happy on this racetrack. It is a dominant, dominant day. One year he led what? All but, all but I don't know, six miles. Okay. Some ridiculous number. I'm telling you. Led what? 392 out of 400 laps? It was Good a grief. It was a butt whoop. It was a mugging. Well, Kyle was driving wheels off that Xfinity car today, Kevin. We were in the trailer watching him. Yeah, he definitely, definitely did a good job in the Xfinity race getting the most out of that car. And, and I think right now it's, it's – um, He's still driving. It's still a long day's work. It's a long weekend's worth of work for these guys that have that have done double duty. So you got to take care of yourself tonight. Get hydrated. Another one who's done double duty today. Race again tomorrow is Chase Elliott. Great stats. His type of race. Just that long race where you got to have a good consistent car. Good strategy and good a good strategy. Plan. They had a good plan. These guys don't make a lot of mistakes. They do a great job on their pit road speeds and pit stops and. We got. Look at this. We've got twin hoods. PR lap for well, Johnny Morrison coming to the Bass Pro Shops. Right. Man, I was over there. He clipped me pretty good this morning. Took my son over there. We were in an angling seminar with some guy. My son, my nine-year-old son, was taking me to school. Oh my gosh! I looked. Was, oh, there's a third one. We had a whole basket full of them. We, we got another one. Of course one. we do. You need to buy more fishing rods. 
Look at how I think this is a, this could be yeah. a PR lap. You might have bought the hood sticker. You might have paid for the hood sticker today. It was it was ugly, Kevin. Poor you know, Cash put me to he clipped me bad. You know, you keep shopping there. He'll be like J.D. Stacy. He'll have half the field. I don't even know if I, I'm sure he doesn't even know what he was talking about. But I like it sounded so good. I'm like, oh, all right, I got it. We need it. We have to have it. <laughs> See some great commercials with Corey LaJoy and Chili's uh, doing a great activation with with Corey. I think oh. they've won the, the year so far with their commercial. It was fantastic. I loved it. Kyle Larson has been the master of the mile and a half. I love how he rolled into that corner, Clint, off both pedals right there. Sometimes that's the right way to do it. It just depends on how your car's working into turn three. You can let lift, touch a little bit of brake, release the brake, and just roll all the way down the hill until that left front tire gets on that on that paint when you're running the bottom in three and four. Momentum. He's so good at can, you know, carrying the momentum. Does it drag the brake? Never is on the brakes and dragging Watch speed this. out of the race car. Watch. Floats it into the corner, barely touches I the brake. Went to the middle that time, but still. Oh, I'll bet he had a car in front of him. Yeah, and, and that's that's the great part about this racetrack and why it's become one of everybody's favorite racetracks on the mile and a half is because you have options. You can run the top lane, you can run the middle lane, you can run, run the bottom lane. So from a driver's standpoint, when you go into that corner, you just go where he's not. And nobody handles and manages those options that you spoke of better than him. I think that comes from his dirt background, just him getting in any car at any time and learning how to make speed and pass cars, that all gets plugged into the equation. Good to see Kroger on that hood. Ricky Stenhouse looking to rebound a tumultuous all-star weekend at North Wilkesboro, where he got taken out of the race early, uh, hung around. He and Kyle Busch had an altercation, and Stenhouse was fined $75,000. His dad suspended uh, from NASCAR. Mechanic Clint Myrick, an eight race suspension, and engine tuner Keith Matthews, four races uh, for what happened in the wake of the All Star race, which led Joey Logano to appear on a podcast and say, It's all over social media. Nobody knows who won. They were all talking about the aftermath. Yeah, and that's, that's the way it goes. You know, I think, I think, um, you, know, you see Ricky up on the pit box right there, nobody really disagreeing. Not sure about his choice in shorts, but. Well, one thing's for certain, I knew this was going to happen as soon as the wreck happened. He was going to wait, and he was going to do that. And look, you know, I, I've seen a lot of people say, well, why did NASCAR find him? Because they can live on both sides of the fence. No, you can't. Yes, Kevin, you can. That's the first time I've ever heard you, you say that. You can live on both too. sides of the fence. I'm going to tell you why. You can live on both sides of the fence because you can appease corporate America. And you can promote the heck out of the action. I cannot believe you just said that. All you right, of all right. people. Quit shoving up here, all right? He has never I'm been on both take sides out, of Mike. the fence. In my, I've been your teammate a long time. There is one side of the fence with hey, you. Hey, I used to have a fund every year. <laughs> we, would, right. we, would have a, we would have a fund of 50000 every year for the, for the fight hey, penalties. some fights are just worth it. Bob Pockris wants to auction off those shorts, by the way, to help pay Ricky's I fund. would definitely sell them. Just Josh. so he can buy some new ones. Yes. Josh, what do you got? <laughs> well, yeah, you guys are talking about that fight. That fight took away from your celebration last week at North Wilkesboro. But either way, you got a chance to call a race. Now you're down here practicing. How do you feel about your car? Not too good. It's undrivable at the moment, trying to figure out what's wrong with it. It's uh, the loosest car I've ever driven on a mile and a half. Just trying to understand why that is and, and what we can do to try to fix it right now. Quite the struggle bus right now for the Shell Pencil team. But, um, they're looking for something. Hopefully we can find something and uh, get to where it's drivable and see if we can put down a decent lap for qualifying and keep thinking about it overnight. Well, good job with the drivers only earlier, Joe. You did a great job. Thanks. Hopefully that's not the highlight of the day. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and that's just Charlotte, right? Like sometimes you come here and, and practice in the middle of the day like that and your car's off a little bit. It feels like it's off a mile because of the exaggerated conditions with the sun out today, a race already happened on the racetrack. And when they, when they, these cars don't have grip, these cars are a handful and it really shows up at Charlotte in conditions like this. Well, here's his teammate, Austin Sendrick. This has not been jo uh, Joey's race. He has only one top 10 finish in the last seven Coca-Cola 600s. He's one of those drivers. Ross Chastain, zero top 10s in the last seven races. Christopher Bell, one out of the last six. 
And add Joey to that list. Oh, along with his teammates at Penske. One top ten among them in the last five races. Well, Pins Team Penske has, you know, I know Joey won the All-Star race last week, but in general, they have not had the speed that we've seen out of the RFK cars o over the last few weeks. So you heard it in Joey's voice right there. He's a, they are panicked. That is that is a very panicked driver in what we're going to do, and especially when you see him in the middle. Joey's in the middle of a lot of it, but he is in the middle of what we are going to do to this car. And, and right now, you just got to focus on qualifying to try to make something out of today to get a good starting spot. Well, that's why I'm nervous. If I'm him, I've got to go out there and go faster yet. This thing has been fucking me all over the place, extremely loose, looser than he's ever been. And what? now you want me to go out there? Did you say bucking, boy? Bucking. When okay. that thing's loose like that, it'll buck you off in a heartbeat at this racetrack. I, I just wanted to make sure. Them bucks are ruthless here. They've always have been. The well, cars are up on top of the racetrack. The, the, the one thing about about those Fords, and even even when they're not driving good like that at all, I've, I've been in that position where the car's not driving good. For whatever reason, they can make them qualify decent. Yeah, great point, too. 40 cars entered. That's a full field. J.J. Yaley, the only one of the 40 that did not make a lap in practice as we come to the end of Group B practice. Yeah, you'll see a lot of these guys coming to pit road. They got to get a good marker to this is definitely a, a pit road that you have to you're going to have to use it under green at some point. So you need a good marker on the on the outside wall. Do everything you can to not lose any time on entry. So as we get to the end of these practices, that's what a lot of these guys will be be doing. Here comes one of those one of those Bass Bass Pro Pro cars. cars. That's going to be <laughs> difficult. Uh, I'm going to guess that's Truex. Nope. Damn. You lose, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Noah Gregson. Okay. Hey, I had a one in three chance, right? Yeah, wait, there's no guessing, Mike. Nope. Rodney Childers used to tell me that all the time. We don't guess at anything. Everything is calculated. And there are the fastest cars in each group, plus the best on average, Ryan Blaney, best 15 lap average. Welcome back to Charlotte Motor Speedway, where every team is busy turning their cars over from practice to qualifying. Here's Regan. Well, Mike Ross Chastain starting off that practice. Didn't sound like you were too happy with the car initially as practice got going. By the end of it, though, it seemed like this one car really started to turn the corner. How good is it for Sunday? Well, it needs a hand a little better, Regan, to go as fast as it, as good as it looks. Uh, for Aaron Torian, and yeah, I see Amigo behind me there uh, getting his chug points in. Um, yeah, it's uh, it, it, we need some some balance uh, improvement for sure. It's like rough roughness wise in the bumps. I mean, this track continues to age, and with whatever sealer or whatever they sprayed on it, I have no idea. Um, and as it has aged another year, um, it's definitely rougher. But Phil Surgeon and my track house group did a really good job to make it where I don't feel a lot of the bumps. I feel like our shocks are doing a really good job, um, which is a really good thing. And then we just get to work on the balance now. So um, we tightened it up as we went there. Um, we all like loose until it's too loose. So uh, I felt like I could spin out about every lap if I wanted to. Big special part of this weekend, the Coke 600. is the ability for us to honor and remember so many of the soldiers. The one that's on your car, what does that mean to you to have that name on the hood or on the roof, excuse me? Yeah, well, um, what, probably what's the coolest part is yes, Aaron Torian's name on the on the windshield, but his son got to draw um, his own piece to put on the car, and, and his wife Jerley, um, we met with her the other day and showed it to her, and her favorite color is blue, so that was cool. I don't know if that was on purpose or not, but um, to see their their pup on there, and, and she just asked him to draw something that reminds you of dad, and to hear that story and to, to, to get to meet her, um, it's heartbreaking. Uh, but they've continued to, to move on and, and live life and thrive, and they're winning in life, uh, just like we're going to try to win this weekend. All right, thanks, Ross. Such a special part of this Memorial Day weekend, Mike, is having those names on the windshields of these cars. It is so bittersweet, Regan, but we certainly want to honor and remember those who gave their lives for the freedoms that we enjoy and often take for granted. And the drivers will be memorializing them during our Coca-Cola 600 telecast uh, tomorrow night. Well, every year I walk into this into this event and you see that pre-race show, you walk to your car proud of our sport for the way that they honor our military, um, 
and everything that, that they do to support uh, our troops uh, for, for everything that they've given for us. And you feel fortunate, you do. That display that they put on hand for all of us to see, they mean business. One minute to our beginning of qualifying, and we have been watching the weather radar and where the lightning and those thunderstorms is. Let's go to our crack meteorologist, uh, Larry McReynolds, for an update. Yeah, Mike, I've been monitoring this sail, and um, it, it keeps growing and then it dissipates, but it looks like, you know, I'm in the studio probably, what, about 10 or 12 miles to the south of you guys at the racetrack? And it looks like it may even go to the south of where the studio is. But the only thing I'm say, seeing is it kind of grows, it kind of dissipates a little bit. Well, what I'm seeing from here out of the windshield here, Kevin, is the track is definitely cooled down, right? We're under cloud cover. That sun is behind these clouds. And regardless of whether these cars are on the track or not, when they do get on the track, it's going to be faster, more grip. Well, let's, <laughs> let's check with Josh. Down here with Brad Kozlowski, did a bang-up job in studio earlier today, but uh, how about the car? How did you feel during practice? Uh, we're we're going to try not to do a bang-up job in qualifying. Uh, we try to do a good job, not a bang-up, but, you know, it's a really interesting qualifying session. Um, you know, the, the track, we all came here thinking the track would be like what it was last year, and it's just 180 different, Josh. So uh, everybody here on the sixth team is working to adjust for that. we got to get the car balanced closer. It's really, really loose, and... Um, you know, for qualifying, that's really hard because you got to commit to qualify while well, you're. I mean, you got to stick it down in the corner and, and, and put the throttle down uh, once you get to the center. And uh, we're a little too free for that right now. So hopefully, we made the right adjustments with the uh, build subs forward, and uh, we can go uh, run us a heater. Nice, right, so good luck, Brett. 40 cars, all of which will make the race. Ty Dillon makes his third Cup start of the season, and his first. And the number 50 has a best uh, Charlotte finish here of get, 13th. Get that momentum built up from the time you leave pit road, run that outside line through three and four, and gain that momentum. Well, these guys are the trendsetters, right? Uh, going out first and qualifying is not what you want to have, but it is what it is. And everybody watching, they're going to understand the pace, where to run on the racetrack, how do you come to the green, how much throttle can you use. Every car that goes out, they learn, and every car that goes out also picks some of that rubber up clean the racetrack up. First of many patriotic schemes that we will see today. This is the Merivet Securities Chevrolet 30.62. A couple tenths faster than he was in practice. We're in a 3082 in practice. Let's see how this progresses. J.J. Yaley did not practice and will not make a qualifying run. This, I, I don't believe, this is Shane Van Gisbergen. Two-time Bathurst 1000 winner in Australia, about to make his first start in the 600. Well, this is this has probably been a, I know it's been a huge learning curve of a day for, for Shane and everything that he's done. He ran the Xfinity race, learned all day, first time at Charlotte. Now, first time on an oval in a cup car, I can't even imagine what's, what's going through his mind. <laughs> I agree. Just trying to learn as fast as you possibly can. 30-47. And here's Daniel Hemrick, started 14th at Dover, has had top 10 finishes in his last four races. This will be his second 600. So far, that middle to three quarters of the way up, Kevin, seems to be the ticket. That's where they're finding the grip. Yeah, through the middle of one and two, you gotta keep that momentum up and speed up, and, and then through three and four, I think it's going to be half and half, middle, bottom of the racetrack. Top of the board for Hemrick. Regan? Mike, another one of the drivers fresh off of our drivers only broadcast a little while ago in the Xfinity Series, Josh Berry. Josh, you traded in the microphone for the steering wheel that you're accustomed to holding. Which one are you more comfortable with today? Uh, neither so far. <laughs> no, um, I don't know. Our practice was okay. This didn't, didn't get it great. It, you know, this didn't feel great, right? Like three and four is so tough. It's so rough now down there. And, you know, some laps I felt a little loose. Some laps I felt a little tight. So, you know, that's what I was just telling Rodney that I kind of just leaning on Rodney's experience a little bit here to kind of help guide me through this. But uh, I just felt okay. I feel like our speed was decent. We didn't get a clean lap. Just, uh, you definitely need to 
need to get Phil in a little bit better so we can have a good qualifying lap. Well, we appreciate you joining us earlier today for the drivers only. Mike, he did a fantastic job down here on pit road. That he did. Harrison Burton making his third 600 start, second fastest now, 3017. John Hunter Nemechek won a truck race here in 2021, and this will be his second 600. John Hunter ran a lot of laps in practice. I think he was comfortable with his race car. We'll keep an eye on him this weekend. Especially after you're hearing all these vets, right? All these guys with all the experience complaining about their same grip level is way off. Yeah, you see him run the bottom of the racetrack right there. Just loses all that momentum that that middle lane carries off the corner. Second fastest, Carson Hosevar. Finished 10th uh, at Texas, his best cup finish in this, his rookie season. It's his inaugural 600. Did a good job as pit reporter earlier today. Yeah, that's not easy. All those guys did a good job. It's yeah. fun to follow along and watch those guys do that. A lot of momentum off the two, Kevin. Yeah, and he's he's cho chosen the bottom, bottom of the racetrack as well. Yeah. Back in the throttle, though, that was the difference between the last Lost car. Lost a little bit up off the corner at the wall, but he's still going to be able to top it barely. By two one hundredths of a second, Hosevar is fastest. Yeah, and if you get that bottom lane right coming to the checkered flag, you don't have to go use that momentum for the whole straightaway, and that's what you saw there. He started to creep up off of it a little bit right past the apex in the center of the corner. He was able to at least keep the throttle down a little bit, though. Daniel Suarez, the Atlanta winner is on track. He's been in seven 600s. Now the time on the lower right is to the bump car. The bubble is held by uh, Shane Van Gisbergen at 3047. Top five advanced to the final round. Man, did you see that yes. car bouncing around over those bumps? Bottom now. These camera angles do not, <laughs> they do not show how bumpy it is going in the corner. Inside that race car, it is so bumpy. Suarez to the top as you ride with Ryan Blaney, who won the 600 last year from eighth and went on to win the championship. You see Ryan with the wheel just right there, just constantly chasing that car with the, with the thing and just being so neutral, but you'll see how rough it is right here. I oh, know you won't, but. Car rolled through it pretty well. Hey, that's a difference. It's yeah. a setup thing. And the closer they are to those ride limiters that you talk about every week, the harsher it's going to be. Blaney is second. That bumps Burton and moves Nemechek onto the hot seat as uh, John Hunter's teammate Eric Jones is on track. Jones has a best start in this race of fourth in 2018. I was close. Hold on to it. That is not where you want to have no. these things jump sideways. You don't have anything to, to counter, right? Anything other than wheel. You're already out of the gas. You're long for the ride. Did a good job keeping that car underneath of him, living to see another lap. That was close. Jones recovers for seventh, 30-29. Halfway through Group A qualifying, Daniel Suarez, fastest so far. Welcome back. We're halfway through Group A qualifying. Justin Haley will be the next car to run. Started 16th in the 600 last year. Uh, his best start in the race. Larry Mack, what have you noticed about the 10 cars that have run so far? Yeah, we're halfway through the first round, and you see different things with steering and different things with throttle, depending on how the car is driving. But when I look at the top three or four right now, more particular Suarez and Josevar, who's first and third, they use no brake. Nobody's using brake in one and two, but they use no brake in three and four. Even Blaney used a fair amount in three and four on his lap. See it every week on these intermediate racetracks. He who's going to sit on the pole is going to stay off that left pedal. And this the is the right one down. Right? Yeah, and, and this is a racetrack where you can get away with that in turn three if your car's handling good. And sometimes 100%. you need that you need that break from a comfort standpoint. We, we talked about Ryan Blaney probably being too loose 
um, you know, and just the way that his hands looked. But we can keep the car loaded. Sometimes you have to, w. yeah, or or if it's tight, right, or if you get in there too far, so you just. That's your insurance program. Look at this, Clint, coming to the green in the top groove. I was wondering when somebody was going to do that. And of course, of leave course it to Reddick. him, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Haley has bumped in. He is fourth. Daniel Hemrick now on the bubble for Tyler Reddick, who's finished top 10 in all four of his Coke 600s. And looking at the ghost car there, though, Kevin, it didn't seem like he actually beat him on the momentum swing of that, but he certainly did stay in higher through one and two. Look at this momentum. Yeah, you hear him roll out of the throttle. Now down to the bottom. On the entry. Well, you can use that whole straightaway coming to the green and off of turn two to carry that momentum for that high lane. But that's a that's a good lap. Big lap there. Well, he is serve. fastest. And as Larry told us earlier, it's all for naught. NASCAR made him make a qualifying lap so those tires would be scuffed. Uh, but he's going to have to make that pass through penalty due to inspection woes. Here's Joey Logano. Two poles this season. A winner here in the fall race in 2015. Yeah, and Joey was, you heard him talk earlier. He is not bands. happy with his car. He's uncomfortable in the car. He can tell how hard he's holding on to that steering wheel. Nervous. <laughs> Pretty loose looking, Kevin. Oh, and then it got tight. Chasing it up the racetrack, one or the other. Eighth for Logano, 30-10. Yeah, and you, you could tell that he knew it. We, we thought he might pick up some speed, but he, he knew he didn't have a good car. That's hard to do. You know getting into that thing, last time you hit it, it was trying to spin you around. Michael McDowell has two poles already this season and one top 10 start in the 600. This is the Ford that you were talking about earlier. If there's anybody that can find speed over race trim and qualifying trim, it's this 34 car. Always bad, fast, and qualifying trim. The Haley's car is getting smaller in the rear view, isn't it? Well, Tyler Reddick really opened everybody's eyes as to what that top groove is, and as this cloud stays around here and the racetrack gets cleaned up a little bit now that open open the groove up up top they're just going to keep laying down faster laps now here's a guy that i want to see get back on the momentum swing we know he's capable we know this team is capable they always have the speed but boy it's been a rough month and a half for this 20 car well, christopher bell won the pole at kansas and he's looking for his third straight final round appearance in the 600. Pretty sporty so far. Can he get through three and four? No. Missed the bottom a little bit. Didn't get it down exactly where he wanted to, but still was able to keep the throttle down and keep the momentum. Second for Bell, identical time to Todd Reddick. And that could have been a lot better, Clint. He got kind of hung on that seam right there and never could make it all the way down to the bottom of the racetrack. All right, Blaney on the bubble. We'll start locking drivers in with Ross Chastain. One outside pull this year. Started 10th in this race in 2021. A lot of momentum coming to the green. Stayed higher. We learned that with Reddick. Carried yeah. a lot of speed through the center of the corner. He might pay the price a little bit on exit, though. Yeah, I think that the mistake that Ross made is he had that left front tire on the seam. You cannot have that left front tire on the seam because it unloads the car as it gets in the corner. you got to have that nice square entry to go and stay above that seam until you get to the end of the first third of the corner. Now, he will bump Blaney out of the top five, though, in fourth position. Here's Bubba Wallace. Started seventh in the last two 600s. Finished fourth last year. 2311 opened up their brand new shop, Airspeed, right alongside I-77 in Charlotte. Uh, it opened to the public this week. Wow, what a show place. It says it on the side of that car. That building is, oh, wow, that was loose. Yeah, the front end took off on him up the racetrack, and he had to lift, and then it, when he had to lift, it got loose. Well, he bumps Suarez. That will lock Christopher Bell into the final round. And, and here's Chase Briscoe. Eight top ten starts this season tied with Larson and Elliott for the most.
see the momentum down the back straightaway off of that top line. Lower entry getting in. It's going to shoot up the race. Yeah. got tight. Oh, hit got the fence. Ball. That car has to be pointed in the right direction, and you have to wait long enough on that car. It has to be low enough and pointed in the right direction, but you got to wait long enough to let the front turn, or it, it will get tight every time at that three-quarter mark. Eight for Briscoe. That'll lock Michael McDowell into the final round. Here's William Byron, who at age 21 in 2019 was the youngest ever pole sitter for the 600. This is a hard lap. He's already spun it out down here in three and four in practice. Now you got to go out there and put it all back on the line and try to go out there and run the fastest lap of the day so far. That's hard to do. I don't know what happened off the four, but that ghost car sure caught up That's a lot Bubba. of speed, didn't it? Bubba, yeah, Bubba, that was a mistake Bubba's on, on Bubba, but wow, wasn't that amazing? Just shows you how bad of a mistake that was. So Byron's run locks Ross Chastain into the final round, and the final spot will be between Byron and Brad Keselowski, who has two 600 wins and won the pole here in 2011. That's what I love about Bubba, right? He's going to be able to, to correct that, have another chance at that, put it to good use. No, he's not. I'm sorry. He's out. He's out. <laughs> Byron just pipped him at the line. Barely. Yeah, Brad's just not able, able to carry the same speed into the middle of the corner like those other cars were. And Byron will advance as Keselowski times in 15. Tyler Reddick is fastest in Group A qualifying. Here are the five drivers from Group A that will advance to the final round of qualifying, and Regan is with the man in the middle there. Well, Mike, that's right. Michael McDowell, third quickest in Group A, going to make it to the final round. You were 33rd quickest in practice. What changed in those 20 minutes? Yeah, we, we just missed it a little bit when we unloaded with this uh, Walmart Arctic Coolers uh, Ford Mustang. So we didn't get a great lap in uh, practice, but Travis Peterson and the guys worked on it. And yeah, right there, we just had a good lap. Committed to turn one, kind of slid up the hill, and luckily it stuck. So really proud of the effort. It's hard here. It's really slick, really fast. And so I'm just glad we got it done. We'll get one more shot at it. All right, good luck in round two. Group B begins with B.J. McLeod. Now, last year, he was a chartered team. Uh, they sold their charter at the end of the year, and now he's running selected races as an open car. This will be B.J.'s third start of the season and his seventh Coke 600. Well, I got some bad news for Michael McDowell. It, that might have been a hard lap, but the next one's going to be harder. Right. Jimmy Johnson. Eight wins and three poles at Charlotte. That's three 600 poles for Coca-Cola 600 wins for the seven-time series champ. Track has cooled down a lot, guys. Started at 128, first of practice down to 110. A lot of grip difference, Kevin, between last time they were on the racetrack versus now. And this cloud cover is making a big difference. 30.04 for Johnson. Josh? Down here with Christopher Bell, tied for the fastest in Group A. What do you have left for the next round, and how do you feel about your car overall? Uh, I, I'll be honest, I feel like there's a lot left. Uh, just trying to get the balance a little bit closer. We've been fighting it a little bit all day through practice and then got to the other side of it in qualifying. So, um, yeah, I mean, Charlotte's a, a, an amazing racetrack, and it's a lot of fun out there. You can kind of run wherever you want to, wherever your car's good. So, uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Appreciate your time, Christopher. Oh, that makes me nervous, Mike, because <laughs> the next round will be tough, yes. you know, to get the front end to turn and have the same grip that you had in in this round. So it's a fine balance for these drivers to figure out. Zane Smith got his best ever cup finish in last year's 600 10th. He's fastest so far. Austin Dillon is the 2017 600 winner. I thought you were going to say he's driving one of the 27 Bass Pro <laughs> Shop cars in the race this weekend. There's only three. It was a joke. Hey, we've already messed one up. You can't tell. When they're coming at you off the of four, they all look the same. 
Gregson's car's got a lot more red on it. It's like the blue and the red are swapped on those two cars. All right, Gregson's car doesn't say club on the nose, I don't believe. Now that I've messed that up once, we'll see what happens again. And Dylan, second fastest trying to transfer in for the fourth time in the last uh, six 600s. Ricky Stenhouse made his cup debut in this race in 2011. Started outside pole here in 2021. See Ricky use the top lane in his Kroger Chevrolet there. Look at the momentum gain down the back straightaway. Big difference there. All these teams are watching that too. Reddick was the first one. These are the guys that have had the affordability to watch everybody in that group A. Now they're going to start migrating to one way or another. All the data is going to show you that. Top of the board, 2990. And we see that every week, right? These guys just learn. They understand where the track is. They make adjustments to their car based upon the information that they have. And they just become braver by information. So BJ McLeod's true on equipment four is on the bubble here as Kaz Gralla is on track. He's had one Coke 600, finished top 25. Another nice uh, patriotic scheme for N29 Capital Partners and Rick Ware Racing. And Gralla is fifth at 3017, bumping this man, BJ McLeod. Kyle Busch, double duty, sixth in the Xfinity race earlier today. He has two poles and a win in the 600. It came from the pole in 2018. No driver has ever finished top 10 in eight consecutive 600s. He is working on a streak of seven. Well, you see him go right to that top groove through, through turns one and two. Right down to the bottom, hooked onto that line. And I, it's uh, right as he might have been that just car down in the apex. Yeah. It's kind of caught him at a bad spot. It was just enough apron to just stop his momentum a little bit. Still a good lap. 75, top of the board. Jimmy Johnson on the bubble. Ryan Priest started a 600 best 22nd last year and finished 13th. A lot of red, white, and blue on Priest's. Haas Automation Ford. Reese is sixth with a 30 12. Austin Sendrick making his third 600 start. Started sixth there two years ago, his best effort. Oh. That was pretty high. Made me nervous. See the momentum that he was able to keep compared to Jimmy Johnson's ghost car there. A lot of these guys with that slow rollout, Clint, to get through those bumps good and kind of carry as much speed as they can as far around the corner as possible. I'm seeing everybody pretty much migrating to the bottom in three and four, and I can't help but to think it's because of the grip level in this racetrack going up. Second for Sindrick, that will bump Jimmy Johnson out of the fast five and move Austin Dillon onto the hot seat. Chris Busher will go to a backup car and not make a qualifying run, so we're halfway in Group B. See those buttons and slides? That's what puts all of these pictures and graphics and everything uh, on the air. All I see is that weird chair. What a weirdo on the on the blue ball. That's already that's our director. Oh my God! He calls the shots. Goose punches the buttons, and you get to see it all and enjoy it at home. Thanks for being with us for Cup qualifying from Charlotte. Corey LaJoy, seven 600 starts, still looking for his first start in this race in the top 20. Uh, maybe those peppers are hot enough to do the deal tonight. I think it, based on that commercial, it's definitely not got that chili special sauce in the gas tank. This track's going to continue to pick up speed. 
and so typical of, of this particular racetrack. You whoop. Always, always wanted a good lap for Corey. You always wanted a late draw when you came came here for single car qualifying. Well, now the qualifying order is set by the metric. There is no more draw. So LaJoy is in. Smith is on the hot seat. And Kyle Larson, three poles this year and two wins. He won this race in 2021 from the pole. We'll just keep an eye on these lap times. I mean, it took an 81 to make that final round of the last group. I think this group's going to be faster. Twenty nine seven eleven puts Larson on top and bumps Zane Smith out of the fast five. Just fast, barely fast slap as we've seen yeah. so far either group. What's that Larry. Yeah I just was watching his throttle trace and when he got back in the throttle both ends he was able to stay in it especially off three and four where everybody seems to have to play with the throttle late exit. Always seems to be the case with that kid, you know? Yeah, well, and you also heard from his in-car, he was very patient in letting the car do what it needed to do through that rolling section. Disciplined. Yep. Todd Gilliland making his third 600 start. Looking for his first top 25 qualifying effort. That's going to be tough. 30-37 for Gilliland. Okay. No club on the nose. See how much of Noah it Gregson. has? Yep. It's that old Winchester. We'll get it figured out here. Noah like Gregson on a roll. Five top tens this season, including three of the last four races. This will be his third 600. He's had a good year so far. He's had a great year. Yes, sir. I, I think that we would all say that that's our, our biggest surprise from the performance side this season. Here, Noah was able to dump the gas pedal out. He got out of the gas pedal pretty hard, and sometimes that Stayed helps with the car the rotate. Look at this. Yep. He's in for now fourth 2987 bumps Ricky Stenhouse but I think exactly let's go back to exactly what you said he was disciplined getting into the corner kind of locked the devil in there and was able to pick up the throttle sooner and stayed with it beating to the line Martin Truex won here in 2016 from the pole I like Johnny's plan strength in numbers let's just sponsor half the field and we can we can win this baby I like the way he used that throttle right there he was a very slow rollout and I'm not so sure he got all the way out of the throttle and the nose of that car is orange different from the others right back to the throttle smooth lap for him a lot of grip in this race car all right the, the way top. to the top 2952 and a lot of that came through turns one and two those guys need to go back and listen to that throttle trace yes. because that was a slow rollout and right back to the throttle that is a shot fired by a dangerous car and when you get that when you're able to do that through one and two you just don't want to screw up three and four you just get through there conservatively Noah Gregson on the bubble his teammate Josh Berry at Stuart Haas on the track an Xfinity Series winner here at Charlotte, making his first 600 start. Same thing as Noah. You heard him dump that throttle really hard, so that tells me they're pretty confident. Whoa! Oh, oh, oh. You were saying? They were pretty confident getting in the corner with yeah. the way that their cars felt. Third for Barry, bumping Gregson. Great lap for Josh. And moving Sindrick. I think that's going to be the bubble that right bubble. there on that bubble that 74 keep an eye on that 74 remember it took an 81 last time and I think this track's getting a lot faster Kevin that locks Truex into the fast five Alex Bowman started top 10 in the 600 two of the last three years it's another good lap. Second for Bowman. That will bump Sindrick and move Kyle Bush onto the bubble. And that will lock Bowman into the fast five. Chase Elliott making his 300th start in the Cup Series. He has started here third as a best. Beat him to the throttle, but just a little bit. Gonna have to work down here, three and four, find something. 
Didn't arc the corner near as much as Kyle Busch is yeah. paying the penalty so far, but he's staying with the throttle here. He comes back. He's going to get him. Good exit. Fourth for Elliott, bumping Kyle Busch. Yeah, and, that's and a, that will lock Kyle Larson into the fast five. That's a that's an old Jimmy Johnson way to drive that three and four. You back that entry way up, get the car pointed in the right direction, feed a little bit of partial throttle, and get off the exit of turn four good. So here's Denny Hamlin in You Can't Miss It Green. Two 600 poles, and he won here from the pole in 2022. So you're saying you like the green or don't like the green? I'm saying it's really bright. Okay. I like to speed down this back straightaway. Keep an eye on him down to the bottom. Slow, gradual entrance to the corner. He's got it pointed in the right direction. Lost a little bit off the four. It's going to be close. Yes, for now. Fifth, Hamlin. That will lock Chase Elliott into the past five and bumps Josh Berry. So the final spot is between Hamlin and his teammate Ty Gibbs who started 19th in his only 600 that was last year. Well they should be this close right they come right out of the same shop their teammates. They all debrief together. They all share data together. But oh, look at Gibbs pull ahead here. A lot of momentum through the middle of the corner in three and four. It's going to get the job done too. Gibbs all is third. Th all down in three and four. Great job. And that bumps Denny Hamlin out of the final round. Martin Truex Jr. fastest in Group B. Cliff Daniels, Rick Hendrick, that whole bunch, completely professional bunch of people that love racing. And I love racing as well. So that that whole experience, I was embedded in it from the from the seat fitting all the way to through all the team meetings, all the way till the time that, that Kyle got there and didn't have to change a thing inside the car. Rodney and, and everybody from SHR helped all the guys from from Hendrick and Clint gave me grief because I went too fast at the beginning of practice. He said, "Why does he not give you grief?" He, he he said, "I can't believe that you went out there and just went for it like that." I said, "Well, I'd already been to the simulator." <laughs> That's what you hear on Happy Hour Tuesday and Thursday. New episode each day from Kevin Harvick and Company, brought to you by NASCAR on Fox. Were you scared, Clint? Look at that laser focus. Boy's ready. He wants to see That's this car on the pole. He's got a good chance at it, doesn't he? He never stops thinking. Regan. Mike Martin Truex Jr., the fastest man in round one of anybody right now. Martin, it cooled off a lot during round one. Now it appears maybe the sun's going to try to peak back out. How do you equate what the track's going to have for grip in round two when you go out there? Well, I think it's going to rain, Regan. <laughs> I don't think that. That's not rain. It's going the other way. That, that sun over there, the sun's coming. Looks like a couple of raindrops to me, but no. Um... You know, honestly, that's what's really tough about this type of qualifying, especially with these cars compared to what we used to do is, man, it was so slick and so low grip in practice and race trim. You end up, you know, 31 second lap, last lap of practice, and then you got to go out there and run 29.5. So it's, um, it's always difficult every week, but especially here when it's cooling off like it is. All right, good luck in round two. Thanks. Now he's laughing because that's psychological warfare. If it rains right this moment, Truex is on the pole. And Clint's looking for the clouds he's talking about. That's the <laughs> that's best part. Right, <laughs> it ain't far off of that turn one. The ambient temp has dropped five degrees, but with the clouds, the track temp has dropped 20 degrees. And Josh, what do you mean it's raining? <laughs> I said nothing about rain, but it, something's coming down, right? Either way, here with Alex Bowman and uh, Mike just mentioned in the booth, it cooled off a lot in the last couple of minutes. How is that going to impact you on this final qualifying run? Yeah, for sure. I think it's been cooling off since we started qualifying for sure. So, um, you know, wasn't super happy with our ally Camaro in practice, but uh, obviously put up a, a decent lap there in, in round one of qualifying. So. Uh, hopefully we make the right adjustments. Honestly, I was pretty happy with my lap. I thought I underdrove, if anything. So um, I don't know. Nine times out of ten, I make that lap, and I feel like we were starting 18th, and um, we just had had good speed there. So talking to Blake, trying to make the right calls, but I think we should be pretty solid here for round two. Always a special weekend when it comes to the Coke 600. We talk about 600 miles of remembrance. What does this weekend mean to you? 
yeah, obviously it's an honor to have Captain Felder's name on the car. Got to talk to his mom on a Zoom call the other week, which was super fun. She was super full of energy and um, yeah, just, you know, it's it's an honor to, uh, to get to carry a, a fallen service member's name. All of us are obviously doing that, like anything that we can show, uh, just our thankfulness for, for what people sacrifice to uh, allow us to, to be here and to keep our country safe. Obviously, life is a lot bigger than driving in circles, and sometimes it's hard to see that uh, with, with the grind that this deal is. So um, it's one of those weekends that you definitely uh, appreciate what you have, and um, yeah, it's an honor to have his name on the car. Thanks and good luck, Alex. All gave some, and some gave all. We will be back with final round qualifying and run for the Bush Light Pole. First, the five drivers from Group A in reverse order of speed, then the five from Group B. And what do you know, in turn three, the sun is out bright and full, beating down on the racetrack. So things get a little more different. Front stretch, turn one and two, complete shade. Well, that's the turn cell three, right complete sun. That's the cell that went by us. You saw off of turn one, we dodged it. We're going to get this baby in. Three. We, we all thought. The sun's starting to warm back up. You thought I was crazy. We didn't? all thought Truex was being sarcastic and, and making, we were, we were starting to make fun of Clint, which I guess is normal. <laughs> well, I was right. He was right. <laughs> you know, once a month, I, there's a full moon, and once a month, what? I just knew that that was south, and you guys were <laughs> struggling with that. That way, right there. I don't think you're right. All right, away. so they are going to send track dryers to the front straightaway, where apparently... Why do you put track dryers on the track, Kevin? There must be some dust or something. Because you can. <laughs> I, Hey, it's going to be interesting, though, guys. No kidding aside, like, you've got total shade down here in one with a big cloud over it, and that sun is bearing down on turn three. This is typical of Charlotte Motor Speedway. Remember the all-star race in 2001? They dropped the green flag on a dry start-finish line. And, well, Kevin, you were in the race. What happened when you got to turn one? Well, it wasn't raining anywhere but turn one, and we all crashed. <laughs> right. Most of us crashed. <laughs> and because it was just the all-star race, they let everybody pull out their backup cars and started up and ran it again. Regan. Well, oh, Mike, it's sunny, it's raining, it's doing a little bit of everything down here at this point right now on the front straightaway. Ty Gibbs, what we definitely know is that you were quick in round one of qualifying. Do you got enough to go up there and get the pull in round two? Yeah, I think we definitely have a shot in our Monster Energy, Interstate Batteries, um, Camry. Uh, I feel like it's really good. So thank you to Toyota and everybody that gives us the opportunity. We're going to go out there and give it a shot, and hopefully I can get my first pull. Busy day today for you. Had the Xfinity race earlier. Having any fun out there in the Xfinity race? Looked like it was a little bit of a blast. Yeah, it's definitely fun going down and running with the those guys. Um, definitely wish we could have finished better and, and not gotten wrecked, but uh, I had a great time. Naked Heat gets us for giving the opportunity. All right, good luck in the second round here. Thanks, Ty. Well, he finished ninth earlier today. Uh -oh. Was, uh, oh, there's a yawn. Big yawn. Well, Pick the helmet. You know what? Um, I, th I think Ty Gibbs is right. I think he does have a good shot at the pole. Well, I, I like the fact of fact that he's had so many laps on the racetrack today, and, and you said it during the break, the way he was able to just fling that car in there and be and be comfortable with it. And then we saw Martin Truex Jr. do the same thing. So it's going to be interesting to see what this lap time is because usually the second run on tires here, you just kind of want to go out and maintain what you did in the first round to, to be able to try to run the same lap time. But with this rain, Clint, I want to go out there and beat the competition and get the number one stall. Start on the front row. That's why? what I want to do. Tell That's us why. Because we're going to be doing a lot of pitting on a 600-mile race. And that number one stall is 16 feet. Benefit. It's 16 feet from the end of that pit stall to the timing line. And this is the biggest advantage on the circuit as far as okay, this having is, that first stall. That is not rain they're picking up, Thank Clint, you, Mike. from the front straightaway. That's right. What does 16 feet equate positions on pit road? Almost every single time. Well, we saw it at we saw it at Darlington, and it's it's going to be even more effective here. Yeah, they're trying to huh? yeah they're trying to find those raindrops. Yeah, they're just letting us sell go by, make sure that we don't have that other scenario like you guys did. Drive off, drive off into turn one and have trouble. Those raindrops look a little chunky. 
Fun weekend, guys. This infield, I've been out there. I went for a jog this morning, walked the dog. Holy cow, are they having some fun. Packed, sold out. Is this the hardest part? They say waiting is the hardest part. Well, it just adds another, it adds another element, another layer to what the variables could be as far as what the lap time needs to be and what your commitment level is, how much throttle you need to carry, what the, what the positioning on the racetrack needs to be. Now you've got the sun out in turn three again. You've had the, I guess they, they say there might have been a couple raindrops down there, but um, it's hard to know what you need to do from a throttle speed standpoint when you get in these scenarios. So it's not so much that they say it, it's Tom Petty sang it. Yeah. Yeah. That's Waiting right. is the hardest part. Waiting is the hardest part, Mike. Well, uh, there's that weather system moving away. Uh, Larry Mack says the weather rock outside the Charlotte studio is dry. So what next? Regan. Well, Mike Cliff Daniels, uh, Busy weekend last weekend. You had multiple drivers this weekend. This weekend you got one driver. You got your driver, driver Kyle Larson, back from Indy. How did practice go? And uh, what do you? How do you predict what your car is going to do with this weather changing so much? Well, I mean, the cool temps is certainly going to get faster. And um, you know, just a big shout out to everybody at HendrickCars.com, Chevrolet, and really everybody at Hendrick Motorsports that have helped us get to this point. Um, you know, we've had a lot of. A lot of scenarios, a, a lot of juggling back and forth, and everyone's just done such a great job. Big thank you to Mr. Hendrick as well. And, uh, you know, for today, I, I think our car's close. You know, we, we made a few adjustments on it from round one to round two here. To your point, it's a little bit of a guess now with the cloud, but um, I know Kyle's going to drive it, so we'll see. All right, that's one thing we always know. Kyle's going to get after it. Thanks, Cliff. Boy, Kyle has had a busy month of May. Um, you want frequent flyer miles? Kyle Larson's got him. May 14th where he went and ran practice, 14th and 15th. Those are the on-track miles for Kyle Larson. Almost 300 of them through the 17th. Okay, 315. Plus qualifying. Then, North Wilkesboro, the all-star race. Back to Indy for practice. Final practice. 820 race miles, 1,158 frequent flyer miles. Kind of does, does Rick give out frequent flyer miles when you fly on his plane? I don't know. All right, final round qualifying. Somebody's going to win the Bush Light Pole. Track is dry. Well, I think they all know they need to run that high line uh, through, through turns one and two. That seems to be consistently where the most speed has been. William Byron was 29.81 in round one. If the track's getting cooler, let's see if he can pick up. Good arc getting into three. Didn't use a lot of track up off the of four. It shows me that track's got some grip in it. 29.41. That is four tenths faster. Well, there's your answer. Round one. You know, and that's what all the drivers wanted to see. Now Ross Chastain was 29.77. Picked up a little bit more speed, bottomed out a little bit, getting into one. Stayed down just a little bit from where Byron was in one and two. Yeah, and that's the tricky part when you start picking up all this speed. Everything they figured from a lap time standpoint is now different. Not pointed right on the exit. That's what I saw with Byron's car that I liked. He got down to the bottom. He arced it well, getting into three. 29.62, he picks up 15 one hundredths. Car answered to call and he was able to stay low and stay on the throttle up off of four. Two Chevrolets start us off. Here's Michael McDowell's Ford. 29.76 in round one. Dow, a couple of poles already this year. You see that first car of his career bounce around a little bit as it came off of those bumps and just kind of just had to wait on getting the car pointed in the right direction to the center of the corner. 29 68 a pickup of eight one hundredths. For think, McDowell who's third the speed about, and the banking in one and two that's you just hold your own there. The difference maker is that three and four. Christopher yeah. Bell, 29.71 in the first round. Think about what William Byron said. They worked on their car turning. And what did you say, Clint? 
That's exactly what it did. That car answered the call. But look at this. Bell carrying more speed. More momentum coming to the line. More speed through one and two. Yeah, and we saw both of, both of his teammates able to do that. Martin Truex Jr. and Ty Gibbs through that top lane. Missed the bottom a little bit, Kevin. Will he pay the price on exit? Here he comes back. Carrying too much speed through the center. 29-43. Misses it by two one-hundredths. Barely. Although he picked up three-tenths. Well, and that's just that point in the center of the corner. He never made it all the way to the bottom. Tyler Reddick also 29.714 in round one. Well, he's the he's the guy that kind of showed all these guys what to do with this high lane. When he made his first qualifying run. You heard it roll out of the gas a little bit more than what you saw with Byron. Tight. Didn't carry that point. Didn't roll the bottom as good as that William Byron did. Yeah, and I think with the conditions that you have right now, I think you're going to have to get out of the throttle quickly to make that car rotate like it needs to instead of trailing that throttle into three. Back the corner up. Let the car do its thing in the center of the corner and beat him to the throttle. Reddick picked up seven one hundredths. Here is Chase Elliott, 29-73 in the first round. Byron has been faster taking the green than anyone else who's run so far. It's a pretty good one and two by Chase Elliott right here. It's all going to come down to the center of this corner in three and four. These Hendrick cars came to play. Every one of them fast. Well, you can see the ghost car. I mean, William Byron's ghost car off of turn four is just a half a car to a whole car lower. That tells you that he's pointed and rotated in the center of the corner better. Elliott picked up 18 one hundredths. And is third. Kyle Larson in round one, 29 7 11. See the speed difference coming to the line. Byron is a little bit better. Not much thought or lot time to Kyle Larson. He's car carrying some speed momentum off of the corner. Yeah, he got off a of turn two really good. Hear him just Back the dump corner that up. throttle. Yes, sir. Not quite as pointed. Oh. oh, whoa, big moment there. Went for it. Well, and when then you say not quite as pointed right there, and then he winds up with wheel into it. When it catches up about three quarters away off the corner, then that back snaps around because the front wheels are turned so sharp. Same as round one for Larson. Ty Gibbs, 29-62, needs to pick up a little more than two tenths here to take the pole from Byron. Boy, he wasn't out of the gas much. Staying the throttle there too. Can no he lift. Stay with it the on throttle. the exit. Wow. No, keep an eye on the exit. No lift. He's going to do it. 29-35. A pickup of almost three tenths. Two to go. Alex Bowman. 29-52. On round one. For Alex Bowman. Well now we know you're going to have to carry some partial throttle through turns three and four and you're going to have to be able to rotate doing it like Ty Gibbs. Bigger arc didn't get it to the bottom. Nope. And Bowman is fifth with a 56. Right on top of what he ran in round one. So it is Gibbs versus Martin Truex. For the poll. Truex 29-52 in round one. He needs to pick up 17 one hundredths of a second here. It all comes out of three and four. That's a difference maker. Boy, the kid versus the veteran. Yeah, and you could tell just by that lift that that wasn't going to be the lap. Couldn't get it to the bottom. It's going to be Ty Gibbs. Fourth for Truex of 52. He backs up his round one time. And there is your first time Bush Light Pole winner, former Xfinity champ, Ty Gibbs. Regan. Well, Ty Gibbs, first career pole. 
and it comes in a very big race, the Coke 600. You'll lead the field to green tomorrow. You'll have the first pit pick. How important is all of that? Yeah, it's definitely really important. You know, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my Monster Energy Interstate Batteries crew. Um, we've got a really fast Camry, and hopefully we can go out there and win it um, tomorrow and get ourselves in the playoffs, but go win a great race. All right, congratulations on the first poll. Second youngest Coke 600 poll winner in history, William Byron, the youngest. And they will lead the field to green here on Stock Car Racing's longest night. Ty Gibbs, 21 years old, first career pole in his 65th Cup race. We'll see you tomorrow.